Hey guys, Buildzoid here with another PCB breakdown video. Today, the reference 290X. Um, I know this PCB really, really well because I had a card with it. Well, I had two cards with it, and I've butchered this PCB. Um, I will drop, there will be a link to how badly I butchered my 290X uh, down in the comments. That there, There's a blog post about it, and basically, yeah, I did... Because I decided to use the 290X PCB as my practice for the Fury X, because the Fury X uses a very similar PCB co component-wise and functionality-wise. Um, the layout itself is actually completely different, but yeah, it's very similar in some ways. So I decided to practice uh, Fury X modding on a 290X, so I know this PCB really, really well. Um, so let's get to this. The you you got on the 290x reference PCB you got three uh, voltage regulation sections. So you got your memory over here. You got VCCSA or VPLL or VOX or whatever you want to call it. You know the one the extra voltage available in an afterburner. That's there. And then you got core voltage here, like that. And yeah, so that there's core voltage. So phase counts. We got one phase for memory, one phase for the PLL or aux or, you know, the extra voltage that these come with, and five phases for the V core. And the voltage controller on this thing is the IR3567B. It's located right here. This thing controls the memory and uh, core voltage. And it's a 6 plus 2 phase voltage controller. AMD only choose to use 5 phases on, you know, 5 of its uh, 6 and 1 of its 2 uh, PWM outputs. And it controls memory and core. I don't know what controller controls the auxiliary voltage. On the other hand, there's really no reason why you would need hard mods on that thing. Because a lot of auxiliary voltage doesn't really help much on these cards and you know the available adjustment in afterburner is plenty so then let's break down the componentry used in these vrms uh amd has a tendency to go absolutely freaking insane when they design their vrms so we got 70 amp inductors so that's these things and yep these are the super coil whiny ones but Coil wine isn't a measure of quality, and these are really like, well, they're not. They, depends on how you define quality, but as far as power throughput goes, these are perfect. Okay, these are really popular in the server market, on server motherboards, and, and you know, like high endurance stuff. These are great for high power, um, but the problem is they're used in servers, and nobody cares if they whine in a server because there's a delta fan cooling the damn thing. So you couldn't hear the coil whine even if you tried. Um, for MOSFETs, uh, the VRM is fully loaded. Like, everything on this VRM is IR. So the voltage controller, that's an IR3567B. Uh, the MOSFETs are also IR. The small ones, these right here, that's the high side FET. That's a IR6811. The 6811 is a relatively low power MOSFET. It does 32 amps at 125 degrees, and this is what feeds the VRM with 12 volts. So it doesn't need to be super high current handling because 32 amps is, you know, that, that gives you 360 watts um, at 125 degrees. At lower temperatures, uh, you know, and you really should keep this VRM cool because it does have a thermal, it does have thermal protection from the IR3567B. Uh, if these VRMs go over a, I think 110 degrees, they start to throttle the GPU core clocks. So yeah, if you don't keep this cool, it, you're you're just going to get throttled, and you're not even going to be able to risk the VRM unless you run a modded BIOS or uh, mess around with the voltage controller. Um, for our high, uh, for the high side, AMD chose to go with what I'm pretty sure is the most powerful MOSFET ever used on any graphics card. So this thing is for the low side. This is a IR6894. 
This is 70 amps at 125 degrees. Um, these are beasts. These are absolute beasts. These are popular, like, EVGA used them on at least, I, I think they used them on a, several classifieds and one kingpin. Uh, EVGA also uses it on the E-Power. Uh, Galaxy, uh, Galaxy, or Galaxy at the time, or KFA2, um, they used uh, these on one of their Hall of Fame cards. There's uh, MSI uses these on some of their Lightning cards. There's a lot of GPUs built with these. These things are absolutely ridiculously high power MOSFETs. Um, you know, push a ton of power through them. And that's great. The only problem with these is they run really, really, really hot. Um, so... They're not particularly efficient, and the 390X actually loses them on basically all the cards. I don't think there's a single 390X still using this MOSFET, and instead they all went over to integrated power IR stages, which are much more efficient uh, without, you know, but they lose some of the ridiculous power throughput for the efficiency increase. Um, so yeah, and these scale up to 160 amps at 25 degrees. So, yeah, these are insane. These are absolutely ridiculous. If you can cool them, this VRM will supply truckloads of power to the GPU core. Now, talking about maximum current throughputs, this whole VRM right here, so core voltage, you got 350 amps at 125 degrees. This goes up to something, something like 700. No, it doesn't go to 700. It goes to like 500 something amps at 90 degrees. There is a graph in the data sheet for these, so if you just Google 6894, you'll find the data sheet, and you, you'll find the graph where they show maximum current throughput. So if you cool this thing, you can push a lot more power through it. Um, and this low side, like, these FETs are just used all across the PCB, so this is also the same 70 amp MOSFET. This is also, that's again a 6811, so that's another 32 amp high side. So yeah. Overall, MOSFET selection on the 290X, it's it's great. It's really, really good. Um, great power throughput, really, really nice PCB. Um, you can uh, get, uh, but the problem with these is they run really, really hot, and you can actually overheat them. So if you run like, uh, there's, um, so speaking of, you know, overclocking the thing, there there's two BIOSes. Um, made by Shimino, who I think, well, at the time he certainly was working at Asus as an engineer for something. Um, and he released two BIOSes for the 290X reference cards. And one of them is the PT3, and one of them is the PT1. The PT1 has no power limit, no voltage limit, and allows, but has V droop. So that one's safe to use on water cooling and air cooling. There is also a PT3 BIOS which has no V droop, and that thing allows you to push, you know, it's like that's the LN2 BIOS, and that one has a tendency to burn out um, this FET right here. These high side FETs tend to die when using that BIOS because, you know, no V droop, no power uh, restrictions, no nothing, and the end result is that these can't take the load because they overheat. So, yeah, if you're running the PT3 BIOS, you really, 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 really got to work on keeping this VRM cool. If you're not, you know, if you're using air cooling, just don't use the PT3. If you're using water cooling, I would still recommend sticking a thermal probe somewhere in the VRM so that you know what kind of temperature it's running at, because you can very easily break the high side fats, because they're not quite powerful enough to keep up with the low side, and that... Yeah, so so that's a bit of a problem. But on LN2 and, you know, normal overclocking, this VRM is really good. Um, if you go push, like, 1.5 volts with the three PT3 BIOS on water cooling, you're going to start having serious, serious problems with keeping the VRM from burning up. Uh, and there's actually several people who did exactly that. They gave it way too much voltage on water cooling or even air cooling some of them way too much voltage pt3 bios no v droop no you know no safety anything and it just burnt the high side fets to hell so yeah um the pcb is robust but it's not indestructible okay is it's really overbuilt already but it's not bomb proof 
Um, that would be like the lightning. That's bomb proof. This, not quite there yet. Um, so, that's everything you need to know about the VRMs. What about um, voltage modding? So, voltage modding this is pretty hard because the IR3567B uses really, really low uh, resistances. So you need like really low resistance potentiometers or trimmers, whatever you choose to use. Um, I personally recommend not bothering with V-Core mods because you can get the PT1 or PT3 BIOS and a special version of GPU tweak and you'll have up to two volts of V-Core available to you. Um, so there's no real reason why to mod the V-Core voltage. However, memory voltage control, I don't think I've ever seen it. And if you have an Elpida chip based card or really any card with, you know, more memory voltage is always good and you can uh, occasionally get extra extra megahertz out of your memory. So to do the memory voltage mod, you need to uh, you need to mod that's 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, this pin. So this pin, um, measure the resistance to ground. It's been ages since I last did this mod. I think it needs a 2000 ohm or 200 ohm uh, potentiometer to ground. On the other side, you have the V-Core pin, which I'm still going to highlight just for the hell of it, but I really don't recommend doing the mod um, to V-Core. So I'll do V-Core in yellow, and V-Core is... One, two, three, four, five, six. It should be that one. Is that? Yeah, that's six. So that's V core. That's memory. Um, I recommend tracing out the memory pin. Uh, it'll probably end up around here. And you can just modify the memory voltage to whatever um, you know you desire. I'd recommend, again, around 1.7 volts, 1.75 don't push it above that and you know that should get you some extra frequency assuming that you don't have a uh, problem with the memory controller on the gpu itself v core same thing trace it out i think it'll probably hit this capacitor and this resistor right here but it's been quite some time since i've had the 290x in my hands so i'm not 100 percent sure where this pin leads to I just know it leads somewhere into this area. So again, trace it out yourself with a digital multimeter. Uh, you can power mod this um, voltage controller, but I really don't recommend doing it. So to do power mods on this, you're going to pull, you go uh, trace this pin out, trace, this is gonna be hard so many so yeah this is what i was saying with this voltage controller is super smart it has one pin well it senses power on each phase individually so it's really really annoying to volt mod because you know you need to do so many so you need to do so much soldering to get it work um working so that pin that pin i think it's just every other one that pin And yep, that should be, unless I'm going in the wrong direction. Oh, I am. Oops. Sorry about that. Let's start again. So it's this pin, this pin, this pin, this pin, this pin. And I sense two. Yeah, and that one. And so this last one is for memory and all the other ones are for core voltage. Uh, this one should lead to, I believe, one of these two resistors over here and all the other ones will lead to one of these in, you know, groups of two. So yeah. And one of them is for, one of them is the uh, inverting input or something like that. So 
yeah, you only, so trace the pin out, find which of these resistors it is, and then you need to replace that resistor with a higher resistance one. I really don't recommend doing this mod. I did it. You can, you know, it, there's a, there's going to be a link uh, in the description, which will actually point you to that mod uh, and what it looks like after it's done on my blog. Because, um, yeah, th this is just too much soldering for a power mod, which can be done through, um, you know, for through uh through a bios mod so i really don't recommend doing a power mod on this card and that's really all there is to this pcb i th don't think i missed anything i mean okay so memory voltage check core voltage check power mods check uh there's nothing like the vccsa controller i never figured out where it was and there's really no reason why you would need to change that voltage um vrm overview check we've done that um, so, yeah, that's everything for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and consider donating so I can bring you more videos like this for more obscure cards. Also, if you would, uh, you know, if there is a specific card that you would like to see have the PCB broken down, post it down in the comments below, and I'll see what I can do about sourcing a picture. Also, I need to thank Tech, uh, tech Power Up for the PCB pictures because, you know, that's where I pull my PCB pictures of, uh, from. So thank you to them for providing such nice high-resolution photos of all the GPUs they've reviewed. Um, yeah, so that's everything, and goodbye.